Welcome to Capital Dateline Online. I'm with our guest, Jim Saunders, Executive Editor of the News Service of Florida. So, Jim, uh, we're once again talking about being past the session, and, but it's not really over until the governor signs the bills. And last week, he signed like 111 bills and vetoed one. That's right. So he's, uh, he's plowing through the pile at this point. He, um, he, so far, he's been pretty kind to the legislature. He hasn't, he hasn't vetoed hardly anything. So, um, you know, one of the biggest bills he signed last week was uh, a bill that uh, will uh, legalize medical marijuana for uh, terminally ill patients. Um, it got a lot of attention uh, during the session. It basically is an expansion of a, of a law they passed last year that... Um, that the Charlotte's Web. Law. No, it's, uh, it's actually an expansion of a, of a law they passed last year called the Right to Try Act. Oh, right, right. And, and basically that law uh, allows uh, terminally ill patients to get access to experimental drugs that haven't been approved by the uh, Food and Drug Administration. Right. So they basically tacked medical marijuana onto that this year, a full-blown medical marijuana. And um, so that's uh, it's, it's a kind of an incremental step uh, in the whole medical marijuana world here in Florida. I mean, the big enchilada is in, on the November ballot. Um, John Morgan, the Orlando uh, attorney, and his group uh, have are coming back to try again to pass uh, a very wide-ranging medical marijuana constitutional amendment, and uh, it would it would make medical marijuana available to people with all sorts of conditions. I mean, cancer, Crohn's disease, Parkinson's, Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, mm. those sorts of things. So it's pretty wide ranging. And um, so this uh, bill that was signed by the governor last week is, is kind of an incremental step, if you will. It doesn't go as far as the constitutional amendment. The other thing it does is, um, you know, in 2014, there was a, a law passed that has been known as the Charlotte's Web right. law. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a brand name, but it's kind of how it's been identified. That's uh, supposed to provide uh, non-euphoric, in other words, cannabis that doesn't get you high, uh, to certain patients. And, um, but, that, but that law has never quite gotten off the ground because there's been a bunch of legal challenges to the contracts and, and so on. So this, this bill that's, that the governor signed last week uh, is intended to try to address some of those uh, legal issues and try to get that process rolling as well. The primary beneficiaries of that law uh, at least the way it was pitched, uh, would be children with, with severe forms of epilepsy. That was the way it was uh, was pitched. But again, two years later, and none of the kids have, have gotten the yes. substance yet. Right. So they're trying to break through some of the legal uh, difficulties and get it out on the street. So with the new bill, it's like you can only get high if you're going to die. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's actually kind of true. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, it's... It, it's it's fairly uh, regulated in the sense of, of uh, a, a narrow a narrowly defined group of people right. who who are dying or have terminal illnesses. So there's very few uh, vetoes that have happened. Are we expecting any others maybe on the Well, horizon? the only one we saw last week was on a bill that really none of us, well, I shouldn't say none of us, but a lot of us didn't pay much attention to during session. It involved a... Uh, uh, a local issue in Gainesville over their, their utility down right. there. They were trying to create a utility authority and the governor didn't like something in the bill. He didn't like the fact that this authority was going to pay their, their board members. So he mm -hmm. vetoed the bill. That was the only thing he vetoed last week out of 112 bills. So, you know, um, I think going forward, I think we're going to see a lot of the same. I think he's going to approve. And that's fairly typical. One bill that I, I do think I uh, might want to keep an eye on uh, is... Uh, there's been another attempt this year to reform the state's alimony laws. And uh, this has been a priority of uh, Rich Workman, who's the House Rules Chairman, and also Tom Lee, who's the Senate Appropriations Chairman, over the past few years. And uh, Governor Scott vetoed uh, one version of this bill, uh, I believe it was three years ago, uh, that has kept percolating, and now they passed it again this year. But we were getting pretty strong signs at the end of session that the governor may have concerns about the bill. And in fact, they were scurrying around the last day of session trying to uh, come up with some fixes to address the governor's concerns. And that primarily focuses on a, 
uh, part of the bill that, that Senator Lee has insisted on, which deals with uh, child sharing among divorced couples, mm. it very controver has become very controversial. And there's some indication the governor may, have, governor may have some concerns about that. And that may be something he would look at vetoing. Uh, otherwise, that bill creates formulas and so on, basically recasts the alimony system in the state. Again, it's been pretty controversial over the years as well. Um, you know, that's one I think we should watch going forward to see what he does. But uh, most of the other stuff, he seems to be going along with the legislature. On Friday, he signed a, a very controversial bill about abortion restrictions. Mm. And, uh, you know, most of the other stuff is, is more under the radar. Um, you know, there's the two or three hundred bills that he's dealing with. So, um, you know, most of it's uh, most of it's more routine. Thanks, Jim. For more news about Florida government and politics, visit the advances section of our website and keep coming back to Capital Dateline online for daily postings.